Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Andrew Clark, and today we are gonna be taking a look at the Sir Bella. Now, I've been playing the exact same amp for the last 10 years. That is this Dr. Z Easy G50. I love it, I have absolutely no issues with it, but after literally playing it for a decade, I kind of felt like it was time to try something new. And I'm a really big fan of that big, loud Fender clean sound. And after doing a bunch of research, the Sir Bella essentially ticked all of those boxes. And it's no secret that I'm a really big fan of Sir. I play two of their guitars, but they're not sponsoring this video or anything. I went out and bought this with my own money. Now, just so that you kind of understand what this amp is trying to do, it is marketed as a pedal platform, but honestly, I think that doesn't really do it justice. This amp is amazing as a standalone amp. And after doing some digging on the gear page, I learned that it's essentially a blend of a Dumbbell modded Bandmaster and a modded Tweed Twin. Now I live in an apartment building, so I cannot crank this amp up and mic it. So instead I run it through a load box here. So this is the Sur Reactive Load IR. And then I'm using a York Audio Impulse Response. Specifically, they have one for a deluxe reverb that I absolutely love. And it just sounds the best on every single amp I've used it on. Then from there, it's going directly into my Universal Audio Apollo Twin and into Logic Pro. And I will be running into it through my pedal board, which does have kind of some always on components. One of those is a uh, Cali 76 from Origin Effects. And then I also have an Archer from J Rocket, which is also, there's no gain coming from it. It's just bringing that level up a little bit. It kind of thickens things out a little bit, especially with the strap. Then last up, I have the Universal Audio Golden doing a tiny bit of spring reverb. And that is not in the effects loop of the amp. All of that is right in front. Now, I just wanted to make a quick special mention about the cables that I'm using here today. A few weeks ago, I did a poll over on my Instagram. I was very much in need of new guitar cables. And one brand kind of stood out among the rest. Uh, it had the most recommendations and funny enough, it was from basically down the road from where I live uh, here in Vancouver, BC. And the brand is called Revelation Cable Company. It's a smaller company making very, very high end cables. Uh, and they were nice enough to make these two cables for me. They come in a bunch of really cool colors so you can totally customize that. And they make just about every single kind of guitar related cable as well, not just the standard instrument cable. If any of you guys are in need of some great cables, I have put their link down in the description. So if you want to check them out, you can go down below the video and find them there. So let's kick things off by just listening to the clean tone here. So again, this is going through the pedal board uh, and it sounds like this. All right, so as I mentioned at the top of the video, this amp features two 6L6s. And one of the cool things that this amp does is it actually has a 44 watt, 22 watt switch. So this allows me to essentially cut the power of the amp in half. And that 22 watt mark, I mean, if you imagine a standard Fender Deluxe is 22 watts. So it's gonna put this amp more in that territory, which makes it great for smaller venues and clubs, getting you just loud enough to still be clean and get over the volume of an acoustic drum kit. And then if you do need a little bit more of that clean headroom, you can flip it up to the 44 watts, which here in my studio using a low box, I prefer obviously the sound of the 44 watts. It sounds a little bit more robust, but it is great to be able to have that option. Now, uh, we also have a boost here and it is a 6 dB boost. So if I flip that up, you're actually gonna get a lot more clean gain. Uh, so there is a little bit of breakup on the input and this is controllable with a foot switch if you like as well. Uh, or you can treat it almost like you would uh, like a high input and a low input in another amp. So uh, let's say you play with single coils, you can flip that boost up so that you get a little bit extra push on the front end of the amp. Next up, we have this bright switch. Uh, when it's down, it's completely disengaged. In the middle, there's a little bit of brightness. And then when it's all the way up, you're gonna get like that chiminess that you would get from a typical bright switch. I'll quickly show you the difference here. So with it off. In the middle. And up. 
For me, I'm probably gonna play around with that depending on the guitar that I'm primarily using. Uh, but what this is really great for is kind of dealing with different types of overdrive pedals. Obviously the gain structure coming from those pedals, sometimes they don't play super well with very bright amps or that overdrive is very dark. So it's nice to be able to use the bright switch just to kind of quickly be able to switch between what works best. As we continue along the front panel here, we've got volume. Uh, I have the volume set on three where it stays pretty clean. Uh, I will turn it up here and then I'll try and compensate for the actual volume if it gets too loud in post. But just to give you an idea of how it would sound if it was breaking up a little bit. So that's on three. There's on five. Let's go to seven. I can't imagine you're gonna to wanna to turn it up any louder than that. Uh, this amp really does a great job of being clean and being pushed by pedals. So for me, I would say between three and five are kind of the best spots uh, tone-wise, but it even sounds good at two. One of the great things about this amp is especially when it is just going through the speaker is the entire volume range actually sounds good. Now moving on to the EQ section, this does not have a typical mids knob. Instead, the way that it works is as you bring the treble and bass down, the mids come up. And because of the way this works, it actually allows you to get some cool sounds from a very different wide range of settings. When I first got the amp, what I would do is I would set everything pretty much straight up and then just make little nudges and tweaks because that's how typically I would do it with any amp that I'm trying for the first time. But recently I actually saw a video from John Nathan Cordy uh, and he was borrowing a Sir Bella and he really, really liked it. And one of the things that was very weird is he was using very extreme settings, especially when it came to the bass. But basically I copied those settings and in those settings you had to crank the bass up. And one of the cool things about this amp, which makes it very different from a lot of Fender amps, is that the bass is very, very usable even when you crank it all the way up. It doesn't really flub out. So if I set the EQ flat, just to kind of show you, um, we'll bring the presence up right up the middle as well. And the bright switch is just right in the middle. And now if I back off on the treble to four and I bring the bass up, so. I'm gonna bring it all the way up to eight here. And then I bring the presence back to two. You're able to get like that big, huge, round tone. My favorite settings right now are to set the treble on four, the bass at seven, or a little above seven, and then bring this presence down here all the way down to two. I'll show you the sweep of the presence if you're curious. I'll also show you the full sweep of the bass here. And then the full sweep of the treble. Now this amp comes equipped with a Celestion G12 V-Type. Uh, it's a 70 watt speaker, but just remember in this video, you are hearing it through an impulse response. Uh, and that is based on, I believe it's the original 12 inch Oxford speaker that came in the old 60s deluxes. Once we get over to the back side of the amp, we've actually got a fully buffered tube powered effects loop. Uh, this is something that I've always wanted in an amp. Personally, I don't use an effects loop. Uh, everything here is in front of the amp, but I like to be able to have that option. And I think especially as somebody who creates content, it's just a nice thing to have. Okay, so now that you've heard the amp clean, I wanna hit it with my current favorite overdrive, which is the Brown Amplification Protein. And I'm also gonna turn on a tiny bit of slapback. I kind of like to leave that on all the time, which is going to come from the starlight.
All right, so the very last thing that I wanna do here is I just wanna do a side-by-side -side comparison of my three amps. So the Cerbella, the Dr. Z Easy G50, and then I also have, it doesn't really show on the camera here, but I also have just the regular 65 reissue uh, deluxe reverb from Fender. And I'm not gonna try and match the settings to get them to sound as similar as possible. I'm just gonna go with my favorite settings. And remember, every single one of these is going through the exact same IR, and I'm gonna match all the levels. I won't do any EQ or anything like that in post, but I will match the levels so that you kind of get a good representation of what each amp sounds like. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, you're obviously gonna be seeing a lot more of this amp on the channel, and the other amps aren't gonna be going anywhere either, so in the comparison, if you like one of them more, 
don't worry, they'll still be around as well. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and please also consider subscribing to the channel here on YouTube. I release a new guitar video just like this every single week and sometimes now even more than once a week. I've been trying to do twice a week. With all that said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. If you wanna keep watching, YouTube thinks that you're gonna like this video right over here. And if you wanna support the channel, get some bonus videos from me and get the official lesson notes for each video that I put out on YouTube, you can go check out my Patreon by clicking over there or you can go below the video and become a channel member. Thanks for watching.